Spere for that report. There is a lot going on in the markets. Let's bring in our next guest, Brian Jacobson, Senior Investment Strategist from Allspring Global Investments. Brian, thanks so much for joining us today. What's that saying? The curse is we live in interesting times. It's definitely interesting times in the markets right now. So much to talk about. I think I want to start with, you know, the news that the IEA will release those 60 million barrels, half of it coming from the U.S., that's equivalent to about six days of Russian output. So how significant is that, your thoughts? And then I'm also interested what you think will happen. OPEC is meeting right now. Do you think that they turn on the taps? Yeah, it'll be interesting uh, to see what exactly happens. Uh, the U.S. Re or the IEA's announcement, I don't think took a lot of people by surprise. Uh, I know that it's been floated by a lot of people about whether or not there would be this release from the strategic reserve. And uh, the problem with these strategic reserves is it's a finite amount that's in the, the grounds or in the pipelines and the such. And as you pointed out, it really won't make up for if there's any fall off of supply coming out of Russia. I mean, maybe it can offset about six days worth of production, but that's not really a lot. What could really help is if OPEC stepped up and decided that they'll increase output. Uh, they're scheduled to meet tomorrow. The technical report that they released today indicated that they might not want to. Uh, and so I think that might be more what the market is reacting to is the technical report showed that as far as the amount of oversupply that they kind of model is uh, suggesting that that's getting a little bit, um, uh, the market is still kind of out of balance, too much supply relative to demand, despite the fact that we see these uh, really high prices. And so the going into the meeting uh, for tomorrow, it doesn't look like they're going to open the spigots, but I think that could actually be the surprise is that uh, from a political perspective, they could really win some massive brownie points here with the West and the rest of the civilized world if they decided to try to stick it to Russia by actually allowing that oil to flow. Now, the only one who can really do that probably is Saudi Arabia, who is a U.S. Mm -hmm. ally. Yeah, it'll be very interesting to see what comes out of that meeting. We hear more about it tomorrow. I want to just get your reaction to, you know, how the markets are pricing this crisis at the moment, because historically, these geopolitical risks are looked at as being short lived. Is that the sense here? Or do you think that there is now this shift based on all the aggression that we're seeing from Russia, that this could turn into something that is much bigger and could be protracted? Yeah, you know, looking at the futures market, which I'd like to look at as far as kind of an indicator about what uh, people might be pricing in, you know, say, for example, the oil market, uh, you look at the current price is really high, so the spot price. But when you look out as far as along the curve, so kind of going out in time, prices are a lot lower. So it seems to me that if you look at the, the oil market and the wheat market, those are probably the, uh, you know, the, the bellwethers in this market as far as the sentiment around what's going to happen as far as the duration of this. It still looks like it could be fairly short-lived. Now, the problem is the short-lived mean a matter of days, weeks, or months. Our expectation is that this could draw out for a while, for at least a month. And that has, I think, a lot of investors just kind of deciding, should I sell? Do I buy on the dips? Or do I just kind of ride this out? We're tending to do a little of both, which is ride it out with a core portfolio that's well diversified, but then don't be afraid to trade around the edges to try to take advantage of days in which there's optimism that things will resolve. You see assets rally, but then to also be willing to buy on the dips when things look their darkest. So then it sounds like you are risk on at the moment. So I'm wondering where do your allocations go? What are you looking at, particularly energy and commodities and then big tech as well? Yeah, so on those two specific ones, we're actually thinking that this is an environment where we want to try to fade the rallies in commodities, an expectation that we're going to get a bit of a pullback over the longer term, but then actually allocate more towards those big cash cows and technology. Um, we think that that's actually an area that we want to add more to to the portfolio. They were the high flyers of last year, but they did show a lot of resilience as far as their profit margins in the face of high inflation. So we actually view technology as being a fairly decent longer term play from a valuation perspective. All right, we will leave it there. Thank you so much, Brian Jacobson, Senior Investment Strategist from All Springs Global Investment. Thanks for your time today. And we want to step up your own investment strategy with a free.